We begin the program in Russia where the state security service, the FSB, has reportedly dropped criminal cases in relation to the Wagner Group's armed mutiny on Saturday. It's part of an offer made by President Vladimir Putin to end the rebellion. It also includes an offer for exile in Belarus. Flight radar shows a jet linked to the Wagner Group has landed in Belarus from Russia. There's speculation on whether or not the founder, Yevgeny Prigozhin, was on board. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko brokered the deal with Prigozhin. In his latest comments, Lukashenko said he put his country's army at the ready during the mutiny. Russia's defence ministry says Wagner Group fighters are preparing to hand over equipment. Putin stressed his offer in an address to the nation on Monday evening. Let's bring in Yulia Shapovalova, who's in Moscow for us. Yulia, plenty of moving parts to this story. Break it all down for us. Firstly, let's start with the latest from the FSB, who has dropped or which has dropped the charges. Why is that significant? Explain it to us. Yes, of course, it's official. The case of the armed rebellion is closed on June the 27th. That's according to the FSB. Uh, they also stated that when investigating the case of the rebellion, it was established that its participants had stopped actions directly aimed at uh, at uh, committing a crime. And now preparations are underway for a transfer of Wagner Group's heavy military equipment to units of the Russian armed forces. And that's according to the Defense Ministry statement. Uh, so Putin has kept his word to drop charges against Prigozhin and his Wagner Group. They won't be prosecuted. Uh, yesterday, on, on Monday, there was a lot of noise, really, about the information that the criminal charges against Prigozhin were not dropped. But many here never questioned Vladimir Putin's authority. They were saying that simply a little bit of patience was needed because the procedure itself had to take some time and couldn't be carried out during days off. And Monday was a day off in Moscow yesterday. Uh, by the way, many opposition journalists, uh, some of them are in exile now, uh, they are outraged by the decision to drop all the charges against Prigozhin and let him and his uh, people go. They say while ordinary Russians receive huge fines and prison terms for just calling the special military operation in Ukraine, a war for criticizing the army and the authorities. Uh, people like Prigozhin walk free after an armed rebellion, which could have led to uh, a massive unrest in the country. Yes, speaking of Prigozhin, we said earlier before crossing to you that he has actually fled Russia or there are conflicting reports on where he is. Let's take a look at the flight path that we think that he may have taken. It's believed that Prigozhin has gone from Rostov in Russia and has flown to an airbase in Belarus. What are you hearing, Yulia, about whether or not he was on board this particular flight? Well, basically, pretty much the same thing. Prigozhin is in exile, and uh, there are, as you said, conflicting reports about his whereabouts. Allegedly, his business jet was spotted on its way to Belarus. But uh, some Russian sources here also say that his jet is probably in St. Petersburg, where the Wagner headquarters are. Uh, Prigozhin uh, has been declared a, a traitor here. His uh, Wagner mercenary group uh, was nearly disbanded and disarmed. Uh, some would probably sign contracts with the Ministry of Defence and others will probably go to Belarus. So experts allege that Prigozhin will probably keep the most combat ready units for himself, about 10 or 15,000 people to fulfil duties outside Russia, not here. But uh, well, also, we can't uh, immediately verify uh, those reports. Um, well, also, according to newspaper Telegraph, uh, Russian intelligence services threatened to harm the families of Wagner leaders during the mutiny. That was reported by UK security sources. Certainly plenty of moving parts, Yulia. And another element to this developing story is the Belarusian uh, president's role in all of this. He's spoken this morning local time. What's he had to say? Um, so, Mr. Lukashenko said that uh, the threat of a new global conflict has never been so close, and he blamed NATO for igniting conflict. And he also added that if Russia collapses, 
they will remain, well, they, I mean, Belarus and Alexander Lukashenko will remain under the rubble and all of them will die. That's according to Alexander Lukashenko. And uh, uh, he obviously said that he gave all orders to bring the army to full combat readiness during the mutiny in Russia. So uh, there is an opinion that uh, Lukashenko has strengthened his power due to the Wagner rebellion here. Uh, now he has nuclear weapons and uh, the Wagner group there. Both were given to him by Vladimir. Vladimir Putin. And uh, while people in Belarus are outraged as they fear for their safety and their life because of the Wagner presence in their country and for strengthening of the Lukashenko regime. So, in a nutshell, people admit Putin's and Prigozhin's reputation has been uh, dealt a blow, while Shoigu and Lukashenko can celebrate a little victory. Plenty happening there. Thanks so much for breaking it all down for us. Yulia Shapovalova in Moscow.